again, continuing with our um, videos from previous weeks. This is a series. Be sure to check out the full playlist. It, there should be a link in the description of this video. Um, yes, yeah, so we've been working with this file here last week, uh, the index file. And again, let's see, can I tree this out? So this is my current directory. I have an index HTML file and a folder with called JS with some JavaScript files in it. Uh, and last week we were working with opening more than one file and the way we did that was we hit colon find and then let's say I wanted to go into this main JS file. Now I can't at this point just type in main and hit tab to autocomplete or hit main.js. If I hit that it's going to tell me, tell me the file can't be found. I actually have to type in the folder, uh, sorry, find JS main and then I can autocomplete once I hit that and it will open up that file. But it'd be nice if I could just open up that main.js file without having to type in the folder. Because maybe the folder name's long, or maybe it's in a subfolder. Um, actually, let's let's do that. Let's see. Uh, let's go in. Let's make der js files my scripts. Yeah, and dash p on that. So I just created another folder. I'm going to move my uh, main.js file into uh, JS file my scripts. So now if I tree out, you can see how this goes. So now if I was to go back into this file, into this uh, index file, just as an example, and I get colon find, now I have to type in JS, you know, tab file, and, and I can autocomplete pretty quick because um, there's no f other files inside those folders, but I still have to, you know, tab a bunch of times to get to that. It'd be nice if I could just type in main.js to open it. Well, we can do that. Uh, when you're auto-completing in using the find command, so if I hit find and I just start hitting tab, you'll notice it starts listing out all these different files. A lot of uh, H files, for example, header files for C and C++. Well, that's because by default, at least on my system, uh, there is already a path uh, setting for Vim. And if I type in set path question mark, it will show me what path is set to. And you can see it's set to my uh, USR, uh, Unix System Resources uh, include folder. Uh, and it also has a dot to look at my current folder. What I'd like it to do is to look at the current folder I'm in and all folders below that. Because right now, all those files I was listing, if I was to go out of Vim, I can list that entire directory. These were all the files that it was listing through. And that's in there by default, just because if you're a C programmer, you're probably going to be wanting to use some of these header files. But you can customize your, your path. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Vim again. And this time I'm going to call in set path. Instead of saying question mark, which shows me the path is set, I'm going to say plus equals. Um, what that is doing is taking my current path variable and adding something to it. I could also just do equals and set a brand new one, but I'm going to say plus equals to add it to the default one. And I'm going to say asterisk, asterisk. And I'm going to do is I'm going to hit enter. And what that does is that it adds all the files from my current directory on down, all the subdirectories. So now I can hit uh, colon, find, and I can type in M and hit tab, and it does main JS, and I can enter. I don't have to put the full, as you can see, the file name JS file my scripts. It knows that I'm looking for that file when I choose it. Uh, and again, I can also find, and again, I have in the subdirectory from where I'm at, uh, JS forward slash uh, Linux. I should be able to just type in Linux. Oh, uh, let me see, Linux JS. Okay, that did work. There were some files inside the include folder already, so it went to those first just alphabetically. Uh, let me do find again, and I'm gonna say test, and hit tab, and hit enter, and it opens up that test file. I don't have to type in the full name. It's looking at all files. So you could have, you know, 100 different files all in subdirectories, and you can find them very quickly now by setting that path. Uh, so that is adding that feature to that. Uh, and so just a little added thing on to last week's tutorial, make it a bit simpler, but as we've learned in previous tutorials, 
if I quit out of this and I go back into it, now if I type in find main and I can't tab complete, why? Because any function I run down here in this little command prompt uh, inside Vim is only for that session. So if I want to make it permanent, I have to add it to my vimrc file. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll quit out of this, I'll say vim, and in my home directory, let me clear the screen here. So my home directory, there's a file called dot vimrc, or if it doesn't exist, create, we've already created in previous tutorials. Remember the dot means it's a hidden file, so you won't see it unless you're looking for hidden files. And I go in here, I can now anywhere in here, I can just add in path plus equal asterisk asterisk. Now when I say, oh, actually, sorry, it's, yeah, it's telling me there's a problem. It's supposed to be set path plus equals asterisk asterisk. Now, when I go back into my index file, without I don't have to type that command again to type in main.js and open it. So, I'm hoping you're liking this series. A lot of basic stuff in here that you may not know if you're brand new to Vim. Um, so, I thank you for watching. As always, please think about becoming a supporter over at patreon.com. That's patreon.com forward slash mailx1000. There's a link in the description of that, as well as a link to my website, filmsbychris.com. In there, you can search through all my videos from both my channels, and also you can support me there through uh, a PayPal account. So I do thank you for watching. If you can't support me financially, think about liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. I thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.